All right, so y'all go ahead and do the factoring and the math knowledge question for today. Pause the video, and then once everyone is finished, you can unpause the video, and I'll go over the correct answers. So for the factoring, we're not going to do remove, replace, reduce, because all of these are divisible by 4. And so what we're going to do is factor the 4 out. So you should have x squared minus 2x plus 1 left over. And then you can factor that as x minus 1 times x minus 1. Or you can write that as 4 times x minus 1 squared. So if you had done remove, replace, reduce on this one, then you would have just ended up with the x minus 1 squared or the x minus 1 times x minus 1. You wouldn't have had the 4 on the outside. So you've got to be careful whenever you're doing remove, replace, reduce that you have factored out your greatest common factor before starting that. Okay? So for the math knowledge question, which of the possible um, functions is going to work for f of 2 equals 5? Basically, you're just going to plug in 2 for your x values and see which one gives you 5. And the very first one is the only one that's going to give you 5. If you plug in 2 for your x and all of the others, you're not going to equal 5. So that um, is your answer for your math knowledge question. All right, so we're looking at lesson 32 today. We're going to look at inverse functions and inverse trig functions. But before we do that, you have your trig quiz, your unit circle trig quiz. Um, so y'all should all be getting one of them. Make sure that if you want colored pencils or a ruler or anything, that you get those out now. And then once everyone is ready, y'all can get... Um, Y'all can unpause the video, and I'm going to start the timer, okay? So you're going to have 10 minutes. Once the 10 minutes is up, you have to put your pencil down. So on your mark, get set, go!
so y'all need to put down your pencils, put away your quiz, go turn it into the basket, um, and then we're going to go over lesson 32. So y'all can pause the video for a second so that y'all can transition from that. Um, so if you felt like you did well on the unit circle, hopefully you did. If you didn't even finish it, um, that means that you need to work on speed. If you were having trouble focusing on what goes where, that means you need to practice it. Um, you're going to have other trig quizzes later in a few more weeks. You'll have four more. Not only they're not you're not going to do the unit circle. They're on the unit circle, but you won't have to do like redraw the unit circle like you did today. Um, so definitely need to practice studying your unit circle. It's not going away. So we're going to actually use that information in this lesson today with our inverse functions and inverse trig functions. So hopefully this lesson won't be terribly difficult, um, but we're going to go over some stuff from inverse functions and inverse trig functions. So every one-to-one -one function is going to have an inverse function that lets you go backwards. So if you have a one-to-one -one function, then you can make an inverse function. To find your inverse function, you're going to do two things. First, you're going to switch your x and y. You're going to exchange your x and y. And then second, you're going to solve your new equation for y. So that's all you do. Switch your x and y, and then solve the new equation for y. So we want to find the inverse function. So the first thing you're going to do is switch your x and y. So it's going to become x equals 2y plus 3. And now you're going to solve it for y. So I'm going to subtract 3 and then divide by 2. And so y now equals x minus 3 over 2. So there's your inverse function. That's all you have to do for inverse functions. Okay? So now let's let you try this one. Find the inverse function of y equals negative 2x plus 5. So y'all pause the video and try this one by yourself. So you're going to switch your x and y. So x equals negative 2y plus 5. And then I'm going to um, say 2y equals 5 minus x. And then divide by 2. And so y should equal, if you wanted to say negative x plus 5 over 2, you can do it that way. But that should be what you got. Okay? Now we're going to move on to inverse trig functions. So this is where we're going to be using our um, unit circle a little bit. So that information that you hopefully just put down on the quiz and got right. Whenever we're asking for the inverse, we only want one answer. So that it's going to be a function that we can do inverses with. So like for sine inverse, cosine inverse, tangent inverse, we only want to get one answer. So for cosine, you're going to restrict your answers to angles that are between 0 and 180. For sine and for tangent, you're going to restrict your answer to numbers that are between negative 90 and 90. So for cosine, it's in the first and second quadrants. And for tangent and for sine, it's in the first and fourth quadrants. Okay? So cosine is in the first and the second, sine and tangent are in the first and the fourth. So this says arc sine of square to 2 over 2. That is the same thing as sine inverse of square to 2 over 2. We want to know what angle gives us square to 2 over 2. So if you look at your unit circle, if you think about your unit circle, there are two different angle values that give you square to 2 over 2. We only want the one that is either in the first or the fourth quadrant because we're dealing with sine. Now, sine is only positive in the first and second quadrant, and this is a positive square to 2 over 2 here. Sine is negative in the fourth quadrant. We don't have a negative number here, so we're looking for the first quadrant What angle in the first quadrant gives us square to 2 over 2? 45 degrees. And so that would be your answer for this one. Okay? 
we're going to do another one. Arc tangent of negative one-third square root of three. So the way they write this is kind of strange. So we're going to rewrite it just a little bit. You can make it tangent inverse, or you can leave it as arc tangent. Either one is fine with me. And then negative, that's the same thing as square root of three over three. Okay, from there, um, if you need to make this negative one over square root of three, to be able to think about it in unit circle, you can. Um, either one of them is fine with me. They're the same thing. So we're looking at tangent. So that's either the first or the fourth quadrant. But it's negative. So that means that we're going to be looking in the fourth quadrant, okay? So what angle is going to be square root of 3 over 3. It's either a 30 or a 60 degree angle, but which one is it? It's 30 degrees, and so to get into the fourth quadrant, we're going to make it negative 30 degrees so that we can go down. If we go down, that puts us into the fourth quadrant. And so this is equal to negative 30 degrees. Okay? So that's how that one would work. Now we're going to look at this type. This is a little bit different um, type of question. On these, typically you're not going to know the angle, and so you're going to draw these out. So we're still using our information about tangent, arc tangent goes either in the first or the fourth quadrant. Since it's negative 3 over 5, we're going to go to the fourth quadrant. And so we don't know the angle, but we know that when we do tangent, we get 3 over 5. Okay, so that's the triangle that results. And then it asks us, what is the cosine of this angle that we got here? We don't need to figure out the angle. We just need to know the cosine of this triangle. Well, if we use Pythagorean theorem... we can find that our hypotenuse is square root of 34. And then the cosine of this triangle would be adjacent over hypotenuse. And cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant, so this is going to be a positive answer. And then all we have to do is rationalize it. So 5 squared to 34 over 34. And that would be your answer. Okay? Now we're going to look at one more, very similar. We have the sine of the arc cosine of two-thirds. So the first thing we want to do is draw this out. When cosine is positive, or when any of them are positive, we're going to go to the first quadrant. And so we have an angle, and we know the cosine is 2 over 3. So if you use Pythagorean theorem, d squared equals 5, so this side length is going to be the square root of 5. And then we can find the sine of this triangle. And so the sine is opposite over adjacent, and sine is positive in the first quadrant. So your answer would be square root of 5 over 3. Okay, so those are the types of inverse trig functions that you're going to have. Either you're going to be looking for an angle. If you're looking for an angle, then it's going to be one of them on your unit circle. And if you are looking for the sine of some angle, it's not an angle that we need to find. You're just going to um, draw your triangle. Don't worry about trying to find the theta. That's not important because you're looking for the side ratios later. Okay, so that's um, the lesson 32. Your homework, you do get to omit number 12. You are going to have a trig quiz when we take lesson or when we do lesson 37. So this trade quiz is going to last for five minutes. That's all that you'll have. It's going to be 24 points. And it's going to say, what is the sine of 30 degrees? What is the tangent of 270? What is the cosine of 315, etc.? And then you have to put 
the correct answer. So if you put it that it's one half and it was supposed to be negative one half, that is incorrect. You have to know the whole thing, the angle, um, like whether it's a positive or a negative value and what fraction you get. So you'll have five minutes. It's going to be 24 questions. So y'all start studying your unit circle. You really need to work on those practice timing yourself. You could make out a, um, a quiz yourself. Just list out 24 of them and then time yourself and see if you can get them right. Um, but that's going to happen before we start lesson 37, whatever day that you take lesson, that we do lesson 37 is when you'll take that quiz. Okay.